Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, Bahasham, Rakakradash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the other bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathens that look like the heathens. And to the Akwaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming into another lesson of truth. And this is a video that was sent to me by the beloved fiery brother Kowalia from the uh, the head of the uh, Chicago Everston camp, North North Side camp. And uh, it's one of those videos. It's a lot of these books and images that he that's that's in this video that this uh this beautiful brown lady. Is presenting. Uh, I have a lot of these images, and and um, and I know I'm and you, I'm, uh, Uriah actually has a copy of this book at the main house. Um, but uh, as you'll see, you know, a lot of these books with these images in it, this this truth is just ignored. I mean, they, you know, it's just like look the other way, turn the camera the other way, you know, la di da la di da, you know, the the the, the death adder that stoppeth up his ears. When it comes to this to this truth about who the real uh, royalty is in Europe and, and, you know, and the fact that Negroes ruled Europe for a thousand year period during the during the uh, medieval and dark ages time, which actually they they were the ones who were Robert the Bruce and, you know, and King Charles and and, and uh, uh, the first and second King James and those in those bloodlines. Those were not white people. And. And uh, so-called white people self-proclaimed because there's no such thing. Just like someone would ignorantly open their mouth and say, uh, you know, call this woman black. And I only say that to, so that people know what I'm talking about. But if you have eyes to see, if you're not blind, you can clearly see that this woman is brown. All right. That portions of her garment is actually black and her skin does not match that. The screen behind her, the black mirror. All right. Is black. The uh, piece of furniture behind her is black. She was way lighter than that. She is, she is brown. Though her flesh is dark, she's still brown. All right? And a pretty golden, shiny brown color on top of that. All right? And and then you have, you know, uh, other, you know, different shades of brown within humanity. And then you have one group of people who have no melanin and they're, they often they appear red, pinkish. Their blood shows forth through their skin. That is the uh, the telltale sign of an Edomite. Now, someone who looks that way, um, you can't just assume that they are what they look like. And, you know, hence the reason why I say, um, you know, our people among the heathen that look like the heathen. The, the Israelites got scattered to all corners of the earth and among all races, including the so-called self-proclaimed white man. So some of our people are among them too. So this is not a color thing. Though many of you would like to make it a color thing, color does not determine your nationality. And I'm tired of explaining that to uh, to these stupid people who, and I'm just going to call them what they are, who refuse to look at the evidences and will even try to get understanding and just going to go off, go off, you know, something that's carnal. All right. Because quite simply, your father determines your nationality. If this woman, which I doubt she would, you know, would do that. But if this woman was to lie with a so-called uh, white male, self-proclaimed white male, her children can, would, would more than likely come out looking like her. Sometimes they can actually come out looking like the father. It happens. But either way, if they came out looking like her, then brown people would accept them. If they came out looking like the father, brown people wouldn't accept them. Even though the dark ones are still the, the product of the, the pale male. Your father determines your nationality, point blank, period. And and knowing that we were scattered, that's what happened. So you can't go by color anymore. This whole color thing is a creation of the self-proclaimed white man. All right. He, they, they created this, this lie, which has the whole world, you know, in a grip. But why? Because Job 9 and 24 tells you clearly that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So I'm going to read a couple scriptures and um, and then I'm just going to play this video. All right. And um, this is a uh, first Maccabees.
one and one, and it reads, and it happened after Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, the king of the Persian Medes, that he reigned the first in his stead, the first over Greece. So Alexander, the Edomite, all right, Alexander was an Edomite. His bloodline through the Bible and through history can be traced back to Edom, to Esau, all right, took over Greece, all right, he took over the land of, of Greece. He took over where Darius, the melanated, the brown-skinned root people, all right, and the Persian Medes, brown-skinned people, he took over them and reigned the first in his race, all right? And then it tells you, that uh, uh, it says, and he made many wars and many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth, that he went through the ends of the earth and took spoils from, from many nations and so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereas he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. This was all Asia, all, all of Europe, and most of, most of North Africa. All right? All melanated people. Uh, wherefore he called his servants such as were honorable that had been brought up with him from his youth, part of his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. And his servant bear rule, everyone in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons and then many, and, and, and after, after them many years, evils were multiplied in the earth. So these four, these four generals, these four servants were his four generals, right? Cassander, uh, uh, Ptolemy, uh, Seleucus, and, uh, uh, was it Demetrius or some, but then I forget the fourth one, but nevertheless, you can go look it up. I have to give you every damn thing. All right. And they basically proclaim themselves a new royalty in the earth, which is why Alexander is held by self-proclaimed white people as such a high esteem and say the civilization started with them because they, you know, these pale people who are actually the basis of men, they don't, they don't acknowledge anyone else's humanity, but their own. All right, because great things have been attributed to uh, civilization before they came into power. All they did was came in and, 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 and whitewashed, put, put, took everyone's face down and put their face up and made claims to everyone else's accomplishments, as they still do to this day. All right, uh, let's get one more scripture and then play this video. The video is about 10 minutes long. Uh, this is uh, Daniel, I think it's Daniel 7 and 6, once again talking about those feathers, those four generals. Yeah, and it says, and after, after this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, all right? Uh, Alexander uh, of Macedonia was referred to as a leopard. He even had a leopard and a goat sometime on his, uh, he's also referred to as the, as the he-goat on his armor, okay? He wore a leopard's uh, 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 like helmet or something. But it says, uh, it says, after this, I beheld lo another like a leopard, which had upon the back, the back of it, four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads and dominion was given to them. See, those four generals, those four Edomites took over the known world, the old world, the east. All right. They took it over and Esau, Edom came into power. And when it says Job 9 and 24, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked he covered the faces of the judges thereof and one of the main ways he did that was by iconoclasm so without any further ado let us view the witness it's, it's a bit similar to things like this when they know that a book contains truth they prize it so high so that average people like me and you would afford to just go spend five hundred dollars on a book just a book Right, that is where they hide most of the truth of this world. They hide it in a book and make it so high. The cost to be so, so high that you can't just ordinarily um, acquire it. So, let's get to see something here. It's history, right here not the hate. Book, the picture history of Jewish civilization. Now, this video is not intended for hate or hate speech. I'm just showing pictures. That is all. 
Okay. And I bought this book used. Apparently, the previous owner had it in 1971. Jewish sources. Right here in the contents, we have Hebrews in the biblical period, Babylon, and so forth. Now, this is quite interesting. Number six, an independent Jewish kingdom in Central Asia. We have the Khazars. Okay. Now, let's look at what the Hebrews of that time period looked like. As you can see, a Semitic person of color, Semitic prisoner painted on terra coda. Okay. As we can see, two Semitic Hebrew or Israelite women, you can see the hoop earring, the nose, the broad lips, etc. Woman of color. As we can see, a man with an afro, whatnot. Okay, people of color. Same thing over here. People of color with the afros doing their tasks and whatnot. Right here we have the Pharaoh. The Egyptians became familiar with a horse and wagon after the victory of the Hikos in the beginning of the long period, 1730 through 1580 BCE, the rule of the Asiatic peoples of the land of the pharaohs. Okay. See that? Same thing right here. Now let's skip a couple pages and look at thought this picture was quite interesting as well. Okay. As we can see, here's a Israelite or Hebrew. Go to Fabletics.com today and get 70% off every single ah, day. Bastard. It's our biggest sale of the year. Fucking Esau. And when we zoom in, we can look at his features. You see, we got the woolly, kinky hair, the beard, and so forth. Same thing over here as well. So, that's all I wanted to share. No hate. The press, stop it. Look at Putin. Putin is showing who the Negroes are. When you go into Russia, they never took our murals down. These murals are from the Black Russian Archives Church that you can see when you go to YouTube. Putin was showing the world who we are. He wanted everybody to see it, but if you notice the American cameras, they took the camera and they dropped it. When you go through all of Europe, all of France, all of Germany, all of Italy, all of Russia, all of the European nations and the Americas, you're gonna find out something. That the so-called Negroes or Moors, Moors only mean that you're black. Moors ran everything, and a lot of these Moors were Jews. Some were Sephardi Jews, and some of them were, 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 were other type of Jews, but these Jews or Israelites ran what you would call the European nations. That's why when you go into Germany, they find bodies that are thousands of years old, and these bodies are so-called Moors. And when they go into Britain, Britain just means sons of Isaac. That's exactly what it means. Britain, when you get a lot of these names, it's Johnson, um, uh, McKeever, and, and McDowell, you would think that these names were actually European. But you got to remember, these people were in the Caucasus Mountains. They didn't even speak English. These so-called Negroes and Moors taught them English. And when they came in, in the, later in the 19th century, they basically took over all of Britain, France, Germany, from the 11th century of and that's something that you have to, you know, argue with our own people about, all right? Because I was ignorant to that as well. But English is a creation of uh, of so-called black people, all right? But I, you know, our people don't know for the more many of them don't know that that uh, that you know that the so-called Negroes were actually the ruling class people in 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 Europe after the fall of Rome. That the English came from them, and the Lord did that because. Um, it was all to fulfill prophecy because we'd all end up end up in Babylon, which is mainly and the number one language here is is English. That's why the Lord put the Spirit on King James to have the Bible translated from the Latin, because Latin is truly the language of the devil. It's not the language of heaven. Devil meaning deceiver, 
right? That was the, the language of Esau, Edom. The Romans and the Greeks spoke uh, uh, Greek and Latin, all right? And those and those languages are, are, you know, are not the language uh, of righteousness. And so they would they would have uh, service, church services in those languages and people didn't know what was going on. So King James had it printed to the Bible, but it was the spirit of the Lord. I mean, print, the Bible printed to English and that was the spirit of the Lord to have them do that. 19, after the 19th century, they took over everything. And what they did, they came through and they whitewashed everything. So I'm showing you pictures of the ancient nobles here right now as we speak. As a matter of fact, here's a picture here of the painting by Michelangelo. And it's, it's, it's in the 16th chapel. And it's in Joseph and Jacob. Here's another one of Moors fighting what they call wild men. And here's a picture of... That more picture was in Germany in, in the mid 1500s, and they were fighting Edomites, the wild men. And these Edomite wild men try they take that wild men history and infuse it with Viking history and try to say they were the Vikings, but they were not. The Vikings were just, you know, them heathenistic uh, Israelites that were still following the ancient uh, Grecian gods, all right? And, and, and were warring with their own people, the Brits, the, the, the Scots, and the Irish. Robert Pufus by Gene Fawkes, or king, he was a king in Britain, and here are coats of arms. These are different nations of Britain, of different people who are Moors. Now, look here, the Holy Roman Empire. Yeah, King, J king James basically stopped the gangbang. The same thing that Jake was doing today. The Irish, the Scots, and, and the Brits were basically gangbanging on each other, all, all, along with the Danes. And, and, and uh, you know, when you watch that show, The Last Kingdom, that was what that was all about, all right? And and King James came out of that line of Edward, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it was uh, out of Robert de Bruce's line. It's the line that King James came out of, which is eventually what Charlotte came out of. You know, and there's a big controversy about this Charlotte right now. Charles V, isn't this something, folks? But get this, look at what we call Columbus. He was a Sephardic Jew. Now... Yeah. You know, that's going to take some digging because it's like the third, fourth time I've heard that. I, you know, I, I, I seriously doubt it. Um, it, it you know, that, that could be another person that they're saying it is, but I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to speak too much on that because um, that's not what I was taught. And that's not the research that I've done hasn't shown that either. One thing is for sure is that Columbus did come over with people that look like this. And I'm thinking that some of those people that were working for Columbus, they're using their images and saying that it's him because it was our own people did sell out, you know, and they were and, and they and they, Columbus came over with five Hebrew interpreters. OK, and um, and they were helping to hunt down the dark, melanated indigenous peoples of the, the islands and the Americas. That's why he had to come here because no one else could. There's nothing a mother won't Damn, do for her children. Son of a... But there's something she can't do. When I first watched this video, there were no interruptions. In the ancient synagogue that has been constructed and rebuilt, here lies the truth that many seek after. Inside this restored synagogue, there are pictures everywhere. Historical evidence is right before my eyes. This extraordinary building has much to be desired. Here inside the synagogue, known as the synagogue of Hamim Sinto, we find some very interesting pictures of the Jews of Magadur. Upon closer examination of the four pictures, it is clear to see that the Moroccan Jews of the past were highly melanated beings. Okay, we'll stop right there. Um, that's just about at the end. Let's go to, to, let's get a couple more scriptures and, uh, I'm gonna go to Revelation, uh, the, uh, 20th chapter. Twenty and verse, uh. We'll start at verse one. I'm going to read to about four. And it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the old dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. That was the time 
when 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 Esau Edom went down, when the curse on thy belly thou shalt go, and the and the and the so-called Negroes, the Southern Kingdom, which was made up primarily of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, uh, took over. That's when the Roman Empire that you have to you had they call the history. They don't talk about them much, but when you actually do the research, history will call them the African. Uh, Caesars or African Roman rulers. They weren't Africans. They were they were Israelites. They throw that African in there. You know they love to, to try to uh, uh, take away from the fact that the Israelites were a, a dark race of people, as you're looking at on the screen. All right. And it says, um, "Till a thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season." And I saw the throne of him that set that set upon them, and the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and, and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or his or their hands. And they and they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. So that's that thousand year period that um and we're at the end of that thousand year period where where, where Satan, the human adversary, the adversary was the devil, the deceiver, was loosed to rule over the earth. And that basically, and that started in what? In the in the late uh 1492, basically. When 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 Cologne, Cristobal Cologne, all right, aka Christopher Columbus sailed. All right. Um, that started started the uh, uh uh the Renaissance, the rebirth, which lets you know that the so-called white man is you know self-proclaimed is a liar because if he was ruling all the time, why would he need to be reborn? Why would he need a rebirth? That was an inter a thousand year interruption in his kingdom. All right. And then he was loosed again. And then he whitewashed and tried to cover up history. All right. You can go read Psalms 83rd chapter. And then and then in this in this kingdom, he sought to uh, uh hide the heritage of the Israelites this time. And that's exactly what he did. This is uh, uh Revelation. 12 and i'm gonna try to get through it quickly starting in verse 1 and it reads and there appeared a great one in heaven and a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head the crown of 12 stars all right that woman is is talking about israel all right that's what that's talking about you know because the catholics try to say that there's mary the 12 that's jerusalem all right the, and and the 12 stars are the 12 tribes all right and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered, and there appeared another one in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, the Roman army was known as the red dragon, by the way, all right, that beast, when he said they was loose for a little season, because you have to understand, NATO started with with seven countries, all right, with 10 countries, all right, the, that was a, your, your, your seven heads with, with, with 10 crowns, all right, it says, uh, uh, or, or yeah, having yeah, and ten horns. It says, uh, and there appeared another one in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon the heads, and and his tail. And they used to tell you that. And now it's changed on the, when you Google it, because we brought that information out, and all of a sudden the information was changed. But it says, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the 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 woman which was ready to be delivered to devour her her child as soon as it was born. So they basically destroyed the, the southern kingdom. All right. The downfall of Jerusalem, trying to, you know, trying to kill all the male, the male children, trying to kill Yahweh Shai. All right. And it says, and and she brought forth the man child who was to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. And a child was caught up unto God into his throne. So Yahweh Shai did, you know, prophecy. He was born. All right, and he 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 and he he fulfilled his mission here on earth as a man. All right, and then he went back into the heavens, and now he's going to come back in his power and his glory, an unstoppable force like like Thanos. Except it ain't gonna have a bunch of women band together and you know walk in slow motion and defeat him. It ain't gonna happen. All right, it says uh, it says and the woman fled into the wilderness, which 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 she had a place prepared of God that she should feed her there a thousand and two and two hundred and three score days. All right. And it says, and there was a war in heaven. So basically we got scattered and we came here to the Americas. 
uh, what the southern kingdom did. The northern kingdom was already here. But it says, and the, and the woman, uh, and there was a war in heaven, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragons fought uh, against his angels. All right, and that's something that's about to happen. It has not happened yet. That's the war of Armageddon. That's when this third world's war start, and all these things that they're calling UAPs and UFOs. That's Michael and his angels, and they're gonna fight against Esau's uh, fighter jets, his F-14s and 15s or whatever they call them. All right, and 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 Esau is going to lose. All right, and prevailed not. Neither was there any place found any uh, their place found any more in heaven. So in no more no more root no more rulership. Esau Edom is going to be brought down by Michael and his angels and Yahushai. All right, and that's where we are. We're at the, we're we're on the we're on the uh, uh, the cusp of that happening. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, Lord, honor unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wakakwadash, Wa Ababa Ba Kwam Yasharala Shalom.